So my friends, I have been hill hunting and I found an absolute cracker which I want to share with you or show you today. And as you can see, when you're doing training rides, it's great to be able to do it in a quiet area away from cars. And I'm in a bit of a cul-de-sac here. As you can see, this is like a new development. Um, the bitumen's only just been laid probably in the last six to 12 months. New houses, I haven't seen a car all morning. And there's a hill right here, which has an unbelievable view for me to really enjoy my hill repeats while i'm doing them i've got a magnificent view and the hill itself is it's short but it's a beast and i'm going to show you two things today like i did last time the first one i'm just going to show you the hill explain to you why i like it and the second repeat that i'm going to show you is kind of like an extension of the last video we did on hill repeats like if you're training for a specific event so let's get into it so this hill I found is short and steep. I'd love to be able to tell you the average gradient, but for some reason the data on the Wahoo was inaccurate, hence why I can't show you gradient today. However, the hill itself is just under 400 meters in length with a gradient that falls between six and 18%. So super steep at times. And as I roll down the hill, I'm taking it slow. While I mentioned it is a very quiet area, there's still the possibility of cars pulling out a driveway. So it's important to always think of safety when you're doing these repeats. And I also want to enjoy this magnificent view. Now, unfortunately, the sunrise is coming right into the camera, which spoils your view in this overexposed lens. But the view I'm getting is of the sun rising over the beautiful Sunshine Coast here in Australia. You can see right from Sunshine Beach down to Coolum. So a very fortunate way to be able to start your morning despite the pain I'm about to endure. So as I roll around here, I wanna emphasize what I'm about to show you is more advanced for somebody that's been doing hill repeats in a heavy gear for some time. And this is also what I like to call variation. So a different hill climb to what I showed you last time. And from my time working as a personal trainer many years ago now, implementing variation into your workout is a critical factor in the development of muscular strength. Now, because of the steepness of this climb and the fact I only have one chain ring on my one by system, I am working at a very low cadence, around 45. The last time I did the hill repeat video, we talked about working the muscular or musculoskeletal system at a lower cadence. So this time we're going even deeper. I'm working roughly zones five and six, but once again, the focus is more on form. I'm not humping or making love to the bike. I'm just isolating and working those leg muscles. You'll also see the speed, which is sitting around eight kilometers per hour, which is just under five miles per hour. And interestingly, a lot of people can't ride with form at that speed, mainly because they've just never done it before. So general, Bike handling skills is another hidden yet very important aspect I'm working today. So as we reach the top, despite this climb being under 400 meters in length, it's taken me just over two minutes. So a great length climb to build some strength on the bike and do it in a rinse and repeat manner. I use the opportunity at the top to spend some time in zone one, letting the lactate clear and getting views on the other side of this hill out to the beautiful Sunshine Coast hinterland. The rest period here will be around three minutes before I show you what I'm about to do in repeat two. Now, if you've been watching these videos and you've got some questions about the best way to implement hill repeats and how to phase them into a training program, I have a discount code below this YouTube video for the YouTube audience to an online course I've put together with my cycling coach called Road Cycling Fundamentals, which is a proven step-by-step -step system to faster, stronger, smarter road cycling. So a couple of considerations when you are working at a low cadence like this. Number one, it may not be effective training for you personally. Maybe you're the type of rider that would be better off doing something else. While I personally swear by this low cadence work, and so do many professional cyclists, it doesn't mean it's gospel for you. So if you're interested in trying this out, do it for a month or two and see how you feel. Secondly, working low cadence is slow, yet racing your bike or trying to beat your mates around the block is fast. So you wanna be careful you don't overdo low cadence work. You still wanna develop speed in the legs, which brings me to repeat two. 
Now, as you can see, I get a little excited out of the blocks going off way too hard here, but I am out of the saddle the entire repeat, working in my zone six and seven. Now, I would ideally prefer to be revving at a higher cadence, but as I mentioned before, I've got a one-by system and I've run out of gear, so you'll have to bear with me. But say you're leading into a race or an event. What you wanna be doing is what I call sharpening the pencil. So for example, after spending a month, two, three, working your muscular system at a low cadence, you might go out to your local hill in the weeks leading into your event and do repeats at race cadence. And then if you're doing say nine repeats, every third, unleash out of the saddle like I'm doing here. Sharpen up those fast twitch muscle fibers and get yourself ready for that target event. So my hill repeats are done now. In fact, I only did those two just to show you the hill. Very excited to share it with you. I did a big bunch yesterday. I'm feeling quite stiff, so I'm just gonna ride a bit of zone two now and head to the local cafe for a coffee. No pancakes today. I've put on 3.5 kilos since I've moved to the Sunshine Coast. I found out the other day, so I've got to fix that up. Uh, someone asked me in the last video if the backpack was for training and you know, the drones in there. But it's interesting, this road that I'm on now, I've been living up here for three or four months and I've never turned left down this road which leads uh, to that hill. And it's like a cycling playground. It's sort of peak hour this morning on the Sunshine Coast and I'm sort of tucked away here. There's very little houses in this area, sort of freshly laid roads and it's super quiet, really good for training. I could probably do five, 10 minute efforts on this road, then I can do the hill repeats up there. It's absolutely magnificent. So the moral of the story is, always keep hunting, looking for little areas where you can do your training because not only does it help you mix it up, but you might just find something bloody magnificent. Yeah, that's where I'm headed. For this passion and drive, I'm forever indebted. Known to motivate each person here. I'm sure it's my purpose to persevere.